Hello and welcome to the world of Matthias. Today we are going to upgrade this Shipson guitar. We are going to put in some new uh, pickups in it and we are going to put in some new pots. And we are also going to swap out the tuners and we are going to put in some other good things as well. So let's dive right into it and take a closer look on the upgrades on this guitar and how well it will perform after the upgrades. And here is the different components I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using some pull push pots from Music Lily. I'm going to use A500K pots also from Music Lily. I'm also going to use some uh, Zebra pickups from Fleur. I will see if I can fit some pickup rims from Dimazio. I'm going to put on a genuine standard truss rod cover. I'm also putting in some new tune and volume controls. Uh, I only got two of these but I have ordered the other two as well. And also some new tuners from Gibson. This is what I'm gonna use. I want to change out all the plastic parts to black parts because in my head this guitar would look better with that. If it doesn't look good I'm, I will change it back. You can leave a comment if you want uh, about how you feel about it. So the first thing we will do is to cut off the strings. This is a clean piece of cloth. Let's see if they had dyed the fretboard. You can see that there is some paint there. There is some dyeing going on here. You can also see here, on this inlay here, can you see that? Let's see if I can clean that off. Yup, and now it's clean. So yeah, I have to uh, clean the fretboard because every time I'm playing this guitar I get black fingers. And let's see what's under this bridge. It looks like this. And now I will see if I can take out the springs because here on the D string I couldn't intonate it anymore because as, as you can see it has been screwed all the way to the top. So I can't intonate it anymore. So let's see if I can remove these springs. If I remove the spring I'm a little... Uh, I'm a little concerned that it won't hold intonation because this string saddle here can actually move. I don't know if it will do it when you have the string tension on the saddle here. I think I'm going to have to think about it just for a sec. Okay, so it didn't work out as I wanted. As you can see, when I remove the springs, all the screws can... Uh, come loose. I, I did some new threads here on this side uh, thinking that that might solve the problem but it didn't so what I'm gonna do I'm going to uh, string up the guitar and I'm going to try to uh, use this setup anyway. I hope that the string tension alone will hold these in place. Either I'm gonna reverse this uh, bridge so I can intonate it or I will uh, swap it out. We will leave that for now. Let's begin with some fun stuff. Let's uh, remove this uh, poker chip here. Because it's not a very good looking poker chip. It's always stuck here. How is the finish underneath? Okay, so th these are glued on. That will go nicely on my uh, Ace Freely guitar because the poker chip on that one is not good at all. Mm. 
what I recommend when doing this is to take your time, each uh, drill size at the time, and just use slow speed on the drill. Tape it up so you won't get any splints. Drill from each side just to avoid the splints. For these uh, Gibson original Grovers, probably they have a uh, imperial size here. In millimeters, you should go with 10. It was eight from the beginning. I have already drilled them once. I drilled them with a nine, and now I'm going to drill it with a 10. So just take your time. We'll start from the bottom. And then just turn it around. Let's move into the other room. All right, so we're back. Let's put these tuners on. You take this washer, you put it there. Let's make sure that it's on the right way. Like so. And then you screw this in. Just remember when you're doing this that you are working with wood, so don't over tighten it. Yeah, much sleeker. And now let's uh, change out this cross rod cover. I think that looks a lot better. What do you think? And the next thing we will do is uh, to solder up the new uh, pickups and the new pots. And for that, I have made this template. I don't have to solder it in the guitar. These are the push-pull pots here. And I also fitted it with the uh, output jack and also the toggle switch so I can do a real test from this template. So let's uh, solder on. Actually, these pickups have a really nice color to them. It's not easy to get this color right, but actually these look, these look really good. I have a little cheat sheet here because all the major manuf manufacturer uses the same color, but they don't use the colors for the same thing. It's good to look at the instruction when you buy some pickups to see what uh, the different colors do. In this case, the black wire is the hot wire. The green and the naked wire, that's the ground. And the red and the white are the wires that we are going to use to do the actual coil split. But before we do anything, I would like to measure these. You put the uh, black cable on the uh, ground wires and you put the red cable on the hot wire and then you get a reading. In this case, for the neck pickup, 749. And then we will take the bridge pickup and that is actually almost doubled. So it's uh, 1438, so that's quite a hot pickup. Something to look out for when you are tuning in the pickups on the guitar later. Now we can test it. And we have ground connection.
these DiMarcio pickup rings, I think that they are the same size as the uh, Gibson original sizes. And uh, they are a little uh, smaller than the one that you get from China. They just cover the, the cavities here. But I think it looks nice. And now we will turn it around and solder it from the back. Okay, so I have done my first successful coil split, I hope. I have plugged the guitar into my amplifier and now I can check uh, each coil if it works. I think I have gotten the toggle switch in the wrong order as usual, but that could easily be fixed afterwards. Let's check it. So now I think this is uh, the neck here. So you can tap on this coil and as you hear, uh, you have signal there and you can tap on this coil and also there you have signal. Then I pull up this uh, switch here, like so. And now there should only be signal in one coil. So let's check it. It's signal in that one. And as you can hear, it's much less in that one. So that's a coil split. And now let's move over to this, the bridge pickup. Now it should be signal on both coils. And as you can hear it is, and now I pull this, and now there is signal in that one, but not in that one. And now we can put it all back together. Let's just uh, measure the old pickups. So this is the bridge, and that's 11.27, and the neck. And that's uh, 10.57, so that's a little bit hotter than the one that I put in. So it will be interesting to see the difference. I'm not cutting these strings yet because I want to know if uh, my plan for the bridge holds up. We will see now when we intonate the guitar. Now we will see if the intonation holds up and now that I have taken out the springs. Let's give it a try.
Okay, so what do you think about the guitar? What do you think about the looks of the guitar? What do you think about the black plastic that I put on it? What do you think about uh, the tuners? Also, what do you think about uh, the sound of the guitar? And, and do you think that the coil split is uh, worth it? For me, the Zebra pickups look very good, but this one doesn't sound that good, I think. So maybe I, I'm looking to uh, change them out in the future. We will see. But for now, I'm going to leave this guitar as it is. Uh, as always, I would like to thank you all for watching. If you like this content, uh, please like and subscribe. There will be more exciting upcoming videos. In the next one, there will be an unboxing of uh, acoustic China Chipson. So that will be very interesting. And also uh, coming up is a Paul McCartney uh, Höfner bass, which I am going to review. So if you don't want to miss that, please keep watching. And I wish you all well, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.